He didn't get promoted because he interpreted the dream. He got promoted because he was able to facilitate what was about to happen over the next 14 years. When God gave us this vision, you know what's interesting? When God gave us this vision, I knew what God called me to do. I, I knew right from the beginning. We set it out. You know, we recruited two people, praise God. Why? Because I could see that I couldn't do it by myself. So I recruited this, this couple to come alongside of us. We started in our home. We went on the radio. We, we, we facilitated the things that we needed to do. We didn't have a building, but we had a vision. And the Lord said, hey, he, said he said, just go on the radio, and the people who hear you will come because they're looking for you. They're looking for me. And, 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 see, and, see, and when I did that, I was obedient. I did exactly what he told me. And then I said, Lord, well, you know what? We don't have a place to come. And he said, well, what are you looking for? I said, I need a facility, Father, where, you know, I don't, look, I'm not, I don't need a storefront because you call me to have a big vision. You've called me to minister to families. You've called me to minister to, uh, to, to, to children, to the youth. You've called me to raise up people to develop their skill sets, to show them how to be leaders. I need a facility that will accommodate that. And I'm looking everywhere. And then one day I'm going to work. See, I'm putting my hand to the plow. I'm walking in the dark, but I'm listening to what God has sent to me. And I'm one, one day I'm driving down Upsell Street and I see this school. And it's called, it says Blair Christian Academy. And I'm like, where did this school come from? It's been there the whole time. But I couldn't what? See it. Have you ever been walking? Have you ever, have, you, have you ever walked by somebody, you say hi to them, and they don't say a word back to you? I can't tell you the number of times that I've done that right here in the church. People say, pastor didn't even speak. What's wrong? He's so, I can't believe, you know, I didn't even see you. I was so focused on seeing what God has said. And so you got to forgive me. That's why you got to forgive people who, because who, who, you do the same thing. You walk right by me, you ain't saying nothing. Shoot. <laughs> Don't shout me down because I'm preaching good, praise God. You, was, you were focused. So I sent a letter to Dr. Jenkins, who's here, and she's been with me for 29 years. <laughs> and I shared with her about the vision. Oh, my God. I shared with her about the vision. Say amen. And so, you know, I've learned, I've learned some things along the way that I want to share with you. Glory to God. Because sometimes you might you say, well, what are we, why are we here? What are we celebrating? You know, I mean, I see these people every day. Why are we celebrating them? What do they do so special? Well, let me tell you something, guys. We're celebrating because... God has brought us to a place where we have to understand what time it is. The Bible says to everything there's a season and there's a time for every purpose under heaven. And if you don't know your season, if you don't know your time, you'll miss it. That's why the Bible says, I will stand upon my watch. He said it was my watch. I'm, the, I'm on deck. I'm not, I'm not off. It's my watch. It's my season. It's my time. I've got to recognize because in life, you only got a certain amount of time to live. That's why the Bible says, it says redeem the time. Why? Because you're only going to be the age you are for the next 365 days. And if you don't maximize that time, you won't get it back. You'll be going to another season. I can tell you, as you age, things don't always stay the same. Hallelujah. I remember when I was 21, I was excited about it. But when I turned 50, praise God, one of my, one of my school classmates called me and asked me a question. He called me on my birthday and he said, Ray, I said, man, how you doing? He said, I, want, I, got one, I got one question for you. Because he had already turned 50. He asked me this question. This is a, I don't, he asked me this question as a man. He said, are you peeing on yourself yet? <laughs> 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 
What was he telling me? He was he? I know that sounds vulgar. I don't mean to vulgar. But what was he telling me? He said, dude, let me tell you something. When you get older, there's going to be some things that are going to happen in your body. And if you don't know how to manage it, you will miss your season. And I hung up the, I, I screamed in the phone and said, how did you know? <laughs> wait till you turn 50. Y'all laughing down. You know, wait till you turn 50. You'll understand what I'm talking about. But here's what I'm saying. What am I saying? I'm saying that you have to have a vision because there's a journey along the way. And so we're here celebrating this journey because God has brought us a long way as it pertains to the vision. Here's what I, here, you know, we have an assignment from God. Here's what I understand. There's seven aspects of the vision that, that I didn't know, that I know now that I didn't know when we first started. You know, vision has seven components. Number one, it has a scope. Uh, this is what you're called to do. What's the vision? You know, what's, what, what is it that you're called to do? Why do you need this property? Why do we need this property? Why do we really need this property? You know, this property is expensive. Costs money. Are you hearing me? I mean, the electric bill costs more than, you, than, your, than your mortgage payment a month. But why do we need it? If we were just designed, if we were just called to have church, we don't need this to have church. We don't need this building. Shoot, we can go, we can go to the hotel. We can find a smaller building. We don't need this facility to have church. Are right, you listening to me? But God didn't just call us to have church. Because if he did, he wouldn't have gave us this facility. He could have gave me, you know, I know a lot of churches that are empty, praise God. He could have gave me one of them. Are you hearing me? So you got to understand the scope. Number two, you have to have shared values. You got to understand this is how you establish the right culture. See, because in order to have a vision that's going to touch people's lives, you have to understand how to behave, what you need to know within that type of environment. Because if you don't know how to behave, praise God, and, and what you need to do, you won't govern yourself accordingly. I was talking to my brother the other day, yesterday, in fact. And he and I, you know, my brother, he was here last Sunday. Him and his wife, they're starting to come once a month to our church. They live in Allentown. I mean, Bethlehem Township, which is in the Lehigh Valley. And so he manages a, uh, a, a he manages a, um, um, Installation company. He's the manager. He, 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 you know, the company has like six plants. And he oversees the largest plant. And his plant is the most profitable. They do $12 million a year. And the company asked him, the executives, they asked him, how do you do what you do? How do you do what you do? And he understands, you know, he's like a Joseph. You know, let me tell you something about Joseph. Joseph didn't get called or promoted to, uh, to, be, to, to, to become the um, emperor. he know that? He knew that because when he was in his dark season, he put his hand to the plow in Potiphar's house and he, he became aware of how much a household in the Egyptian family, how much money it takes to run the family. Oh, hallelujah. He found out how much money it takes to operate business because he was over the prison system. 
And so when Pharaoh had the dream, he told him, he says, this is, you set aside this amount every season so that when it hits, you will be prepared. You'll have plenty for it. See, some of you, you know what? You find yourself in a situation where God gives you something. He blesses you with something, but you don't see how to operate it yet. You don't see what's required. Are you following me? You don't know the skill set. You don't know that what you should know to make your way prosperous and to have good success. So here's what, here's what you got to recognize. Every vision has systems. That's number three. Every vision has systems. Are you listening to me? That's how you train and develop people. See, it's not enough for us to have a church. We have to have a clear vision. Why? Because we have 75,000 square feet of campus to operate. This is only one spot of it. But in order for us to manage this whole property, we have to, I have to be able to see the whole property. Because some of those spaces are not designed for us just to have service. Because if that's all it took, we don't need it. Are you listening to me? And sometimes if you don't see what's needed, you become stagnant. And what happens when you become stagnant? You lose what you got. Because you can't afford it. And it's not because you can't afford it. It's that you don't know how to manage it to see what you need to do so that you can now allow it to, so you can grow and maintain what God is calling you to do. So what happens in that time, if you can't see, you become stuck. How many of you know what I'm talking about? You become stuck. You become stuck in your life. You become stuck in your business. You become stuck in your marriage. You become stuck in raising your children because you didn't even know that this is what I need to be doing. Communities become stuck. Communities become stuck. Amen. Black and brown people have been stuck for lots of years. Lots of years. All because we can't see yet. So God spoke to me years ago. He said, Ray, my people living beneath their knees, they have been saved and filled the spirit of God. That's as far as they go. And so God gave me this vision. And I'm like, God, why did you give me this vision? And I've been wrestling with it for the last 29 years. See, the reason why God gives us this is because, because we don't do ministry by ourselves. We need people. But you don't just need any type of person. You need the right type of person. You need people who can see. You need people who have understanding. You need people who can basically see what it could be. You need the sons of Issachar. I'll talk to you a little bit more about that. He says, but the, but the biggest thing that hit me was number four. The fourth thing you need in vision is sustainability. Sustainability. You know what sustainability is? It's the same thing that allows you to stay in your house. It's the same thing that allows you to keep having your car. It's the same thing that has your business to grow. You know what sustainability is? It's money. It's funding. You know, money is one of the big things that most folks hate when we talk about in church. 